comes from Romans 8, 1 through 9. The congregation will read the first verse. I will read the second verse, the last verse. We will read them collectively. Let us read. Okay, let's start that all over again. We're going to read collectively. That means everybody at the same time. Thank you very much. Congregation, read. For the law of the Spirit of life is Christ Jesus, and made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was in the flesh, God sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, the men of sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So then that they are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. The word of the Lord is already in us.
reason why we love them this morning. How many of you have a good reason why you love them this
show which will be held Saturday, July 23rd at 3 o'clock p.m. Tickets are $20, and we're asking all seniors to please uh, sell five tickets. More information is going to be provided. You can see Sister Sharon Thompson or Sharon Birch. Tickets are available now at the Welcome Station. And on Wednesday, we ask that you would join us for Hot Topics. Yeah, let's say Hot Topics. It's been hot this last few weeks. We're, doing, we're dealing with how to handle conflict. Conflict in your home, conflict in the church, conflict at work, conflict in the world. Join us on Wednesday, 6.30, one hour, Hot Topics.
Gracias. Listen, I'm going to give you visitors, any visitors in the house, that are any visitors, fans, any visitors, fans, you're visiting with us for the first time. Amen. Amen.
he is my brother. I have done this with a clear conscience and clean hands. Then God said to him in a, in a dream, Yes, I know you did this with a clear conscience. And so I have kept you from sinning against me. That is why I didn't let you touch her. Now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet. And he will pray for you, and you will live. But if you do not return her, you may be sure that you and all yours will die. I want you to follow along with me this morning and ask yourself the question, how can God use you? How can God use you when you screw up? How can God use you when you screw up? I've had the opportunity and a chance to experience a lot in this short period of my life. I left. Don't laugh, I know I'm getting over it. I said short period of my life. But I made plenty of mistakes as well. Those I can talk about and some I can't. Today, because of my growth and my spiritual life, I can say God has been good to me. But my real experience with him didn't come right away. I've had to go through some rough times. And I'm sure I'm not by myself. Some of us too have gone through some rough times. Some you can tell, some you can't tell. You gotta get away from me. I didn't grow up a rich kid. There was a class of people that used to classify the status in society. We may be considered middle class now. But I can say during my time of growing up, I was ready to differ with that state. The way the government did things, they left out lower classes. Because we weren't at the poverty level, we did have a roof over our heads, lights, a few outfits to wear, but not much. I watched my mom raise three children as a single mom. Times were hard, but as I grew, they started getting better. Right. We went from the projects to a house in Jeff right. Even though that was a great move for us, things still, yes. it was tough. Yes. Yes. Even more than now, than before, when we were in the projects, because right. now that you're a homeowner, things get tougher. Right. Right. I vowed if I could that I would help us get through those times alone with my brother, and we did. Got out alone, had to experience life by myself now. Made plenty of mistakes until I felt like I was a total screw up, and God was punishing me for all the wrong I had done. Even the ones I hated for mom, cutting through. Swear, not knowing what was expected of me. Some that even felt close to my adulthood. I wondered why life has been giving me and mine such a rough time. I thought God wasn't here for mom's prayers or mine. I thought I had screwed up so much until God had offended me. Sometimes in life, you can be made to feel like that. Like you're all alone. Yeah. Ever had that feeling? Yeah. Ever had that feeling like you felt like you're all by yourself? Yeah. And because you felt that way, you started sliding in the things you did spiritually. Yeah. Feeling like maybe your prayers weren't being answered yeah. because of your actions. You started feeling low, guilty, and whatever else the devil puts in front of you. But I come to tell somebody that's sitting here this morning, God can use you. God can use you. You all know I like to tell a story. And this story goes like, as a Christian,
Christian, just like you and I. Let's call him George, just for the sake of the name. George woke up one morning after a remarkable weekend. Family time was spent. Church services were excellent that Sunday. George even had testimonies and answered prayers in his own life. The preacher's message had moved him and several other people, so much so that the church members felt the need to kneel at the altar and pray. The next morning, George was running late for work. And as a result, he pulled into a parking lot a bit too fast. He found his face and turned the wheel sharply and managed to scrape a neat line down the length of the parking lot. Jumping out of this way, George noticed that his car was unarmed. A light immediately came on in his head. It took only a second for him to get back in the car and find a new spot. <laughs> Nobody saw the accident. Nobody needed to know. After all, the boss was wealthy man prepared to go to this house. And if he wanted to, he could afford a brand new vehicle. Or he could afford to have pain. George has reason to himself that he turned around and walked away. As the day wore on, all George could think about was the outcome of the accident and how he was blessed in the whole incident. All right, all right. After all, there wasn't even a smudge on George's car. George felt like that was a blessing. So George started saying to himself, the incident was intended to be a curse to my boss for his greed and a blessing to me for God's goodness. He started saying, I'm a good man. I, I, I'm a good man. I don't deserve this. I just won't say anything. That afternoon on the way out to the parking lot, George saw an argument taking place between his boss and another employee who had taken an empty spot beside the field. Right away, George recognized that this man was one he had been witnessing to earlier that day. Can you imagine George's dilemma? He said, if I remain silent, I'll be letting an innocent man suffer. And to confess the meaning earlier witnesses blown by my disciples. Let me ask you, church, what would you do? But perhaps more important the question that ought to be, why do God and people sin? You tell me. But well, we've all sinned and come to church. But can God possibly use you even when your testimony is blown? Ever had something happen and you knew one, you knew no one was looking? Turn your head and walk away as though nothing happened. But yet maybe you felt guilty that God was intervening and let you know even though you did something wrong. And because of his grace and mercy, you made a mistake, but I can feel you. I can't help but remember when I, I'm almost like George in the story. I was learning how to drive. Trying to learn how to drive. Mom sweet. Left the keys on the table. I grabbed the keys and dumped in the car. Started driving around the table. Anybody know Jeff and I had all these turtles and toss in the And lo and behold, did I sad swipe somebody's car. <laughs> Ran back in the house, put the key in the bag, came to the apple, said nothing. So I went in that. I let mom believe that she had gone to the grocery store. Somebody in the grocery store came out here, and it still wasn't me. I 
felt guilty and was too afraid to tell the nothingness and was not even considering the consequences of who I had to be. Chapter 20, Genesis chapter 20 is what would visit Abraham's lives and God's intervention. This is where Abraham besieged Abimelech. Abimelech moved south to the and lived there for a while. Then he moved on to Gear while living there as a foreigner. Abraham introduced his wife, Sarah, by saying she is my sister. <laughs> In reading this and hearing this story being told before Sean, I, I heard a lot of theologians say, Sarah must have been a real look. Sarah must have been a real look. Nothing against you, honey. <laughs> you were looking at me as well. But people say, people say, not me, that she was a look. And yeah. yeah. fine, if you will. Yeah. Abimelech sent for Sarah and Adam brought to him at his place. Now, using my imagination, Abimelech, Kevin started whining and dining Sarah. Something most men do when they're around single women. Yeah. Hopefully single women. <laughs> they tried to impress her. But this thing went on until late that night. And that very night God came to them like in a dream and told them, you're a dead man. For the woman you have taken is already married. Now this is a scary thing to hear from God, even in a dream. But the point had to be made to Abimelech. Abimelech hadn't slept with her yet. He said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Did Abraham not say to me, she's my sister? And she herself said, yes, I am his brother. I acted into being innocent. My hands are clean. In the dream, God responded, yes, I know you're innocent. That's why I kept you from, from sinning against me. And that's why I didn't let them touch her. Now return the woman to her husband, and he will pray for you. For he is a prophet. Then and only then you will live. But if you don't return her to him, you can be sure that you and all your people oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. will die. Despite Abraham's failure to really trust God in this situation, God was not going to abandon him. He wouldn't let Abraham touch sin. Well. I wonder if we've ever given any thought into asking ourselves the question, can God use me when I screw up? Can I recover? Someone here today may be having the same issue. Well, you know you messed up. You messed up so bad. But let me assure you this morning, join the crowd. Because a lot of us have messed up. But if your heart is right, he'll intervene and keep you from harm's way. Don't allow yourself to Keep making the same mistakes. You must fear God first and know that His ways are the only way. How many of us can really say that we fear God? How many of us can really say that we fear God? And if so, then why is it so hard for us to obey Him? If we go back to chapter 12, we'll find Abraham was living by fear. We see, that, we see here where Abraham had promised, had the promised blessing jeopardized. As he approached him, he said to his wife, Sarah, look, I know that you're a beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they'll say, you're my wife. Then they will kill me and spare you. Just tell them that you're my sister. So that I may go well for me. So that it may go well for me. Because you, Sarah, 
my life will be spared. When the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful, they praised her to Pharaoh. They took her into the household of Pharaoh and, and did treat Abram well on the account of her. Abram was rewarded gratefully for that. Then the Lord spoke to Pharaoh and his household with severe diseases because of Sarah. Yeah. Pharaoh said to Abraham, man, what is this you've done to me? Yeah. Look at verse 11 in chapter 20. Surely no one fears God in this place. They will kill me because of my wife. Yeah. You see, Abraham's only motive was fear. Yeah. Nothing more, yeah. nothing less. In reality, he displayed a greater fear of men than of God. Yes. Stick a pin in that this morning. I do believe we as a people fear God, fear, we fear man more than God. Why? I'm glad you know that. Because if we fear God more, we would do right by him. Why? Cheating, yeah. backbiting, yeah. stealing, yeah. killing yeah. would not come so easy. All right. But if we don't seem to be afraid of the consequences yeah. that can happen to our own doing, yeah. because we did it, we wouldn't do half the things that we do. All right. But because of God's grace and mercy, yeah. Yeah. we can give it up. Well, all right, all right, all right. 
you do know that there's a cost to his own yes. You do know that there's a cost to him. Yes. There was a cost to Abraham. Yeah. He lost his credibility. Yeah. And he began a feeble attempt to rebuild it in verse 12. Notice that Abraham doesn't want to humbly repent. He wants to continue to shove the blame and justify himself. How many of us? Shift the blame. Yeah. And blame somebody else. Yeah. Somebody else yeah. shifted the blame. Yeah. Somebody this morning shifted the blame. Yeah. Try to take it off of you and put it on somebody else. Tell me the witness. Yeah. He wants to continue to shove the blame and justify himself. How many of us have done the same? There was a cost to sin. Church, did you know when Christians sin? It costs all the Christians as well. Let me say that again. When Christians sin, it calls another Christian to sin. See, Sarah was drawn into life. She had willingly entered into sin with him. And yet that wasn't all. The whole message could have easily have cost the Sarah period. Yes. Gonna be the witness. Yes. See, this is a classic case to show how many small sins often lead to larger yes. and worse. Yes. Lying is bad enough. Yes. Sarah lied. Yeah. Well, adultery is capital offense. Yes. So often, what a cost to Abraham the believer and Sarah to his wife. But it didn't end there. Yeah. There was a cost yeah. to a man. Right. When we sin, we threaten not only ourselves, yeah. but we place greater threat on the unsaved. Yeah. Right. He told them you're a dead man. Yeah. How terrible a sin is that? When your sin leads non-believers to sin. Yeah. And notice that God agrees with them. Yeah. God said to him in the dream, yes, I know. That in the integrity of your heart you have done this. And I also kept you from sinning against her. Yeah. Nevertheless, the threat to Abimelech was real. And part of the cost of Abimelech is that there's a cost in the household. Gotta get with me. Yeah. Ever been in a situation where it seems as though everyone in the house has to pay? For the sin you committed. Can I be a witness? The Lord had called in fertility to strike every woman in the household of a Bimelech because he took self. When Christian sin, we threaten more people than we realize. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I told you all of this, and I bet you're feeling just awful just because of the mistake you made. In the back. Uh, I wonder, do you feel it? Because of the mistakes you made? Maybe in the past week, even today, and now you're wondering can God still use you when you screw up? Romans 8 28 says, and we know that all things work for the good of those who love Him. Who have been called according yeah. to his purpose. Yeah. Can God really make all things work together yeah. for the good of them who love the Lord? Yeah. Can you possibly pick up the pieces of your bomb yeah. and rebuild some kind of fruitful ministry around yourself? Yeah. As much as any other, this part of Abraham's life was a perfect example of how our lives are. All right, all right, all right, all right. We arrived or climb to the top of the mountain, spirit. And somehow we have managed to fall into the valley out there. Sometimes even we, sometimes we'll do it before the sun has gone down. But this morning I, I want to ask the question, how do you deal with this? Well, it's a time for a bit of application. It's application time. First, we must realize that God forgive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. that God forgive. Yes. This doesn't mean, it, it, this doesn't say that you keep sin. Yes. 
and God will forgive you. Yeah. Quit sin. Yeah. If you must repeat to yourself for the wages, so sin yeah. is there. Yeah. Yeah. For the gift of God, uh, it's eternal life. Yeah. The point here is the summation of Abraham's life is not one of failure, but of faith. The testimony of the scriptures is proof that even through Abraham wasn't perfect. God was able to still use him. Yeah. Yeah. Second, we must realize that even repetitive sin is not impossible for God to cure. Yeah. Repetitive sin is not impossible for God to cure. Yeah. Remember that Abraham had been before in chapter 12, as long as you are alive, and as long as you can run to Jesus, God will continue to work with you. It says in uh, John, verse John 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. He promises forgiveness whenever we confess. Promises that God won't quit working on you until you either die or Jesus return. Yeah. My third and final point is realize that God can intervene to protect the innocent. Yeah. God can intervene yeah. to protect the innocent. Yeah. Notice that God wasn't protecting the Bimelech here. God was protecting the Bimelech here and not Sarah. But God himself says, I know that in the integrity of your heart, yeah. you've done this. And I also kept you from sinning against me. Therefore, I didn't think yeah. yeah. Just like God stepped in and intervened and stopped the women that from sinning, God can do the same for you. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Yeah. In the many years of ups and downs, We've learned a few lessons about God's will and the big stupid mistakes we average people make. <laughs> and it all boils down to having a biblical practice or experience with God. Yeah, yeah. We make mistakes. We worry that we fall out of God's will. Yeah. You've probably heard people talk about missing out on God's perfect will. Yeah. And now you're afraid you're, you're permanently stuck in God's plan B. Yeah. But in spite of your screw ups, God can use you. Yeah. You're still at the top of the list. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. He can turn your test into testimony. Yeah. When you talk about the goodness of God, yeah. no matter where you are in life, yeah. He can still use you, yeah. even when you screw up. There he is. No fear yeah. in God. Yeah. Your testimonies are that God will yeah. take care of you. Yeah. 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 He will yeah. take care of you. Yeah. Be not dismayed. Yeah. Whatever be time, yeah. so that God will. Yeah. I said, God will. Yeah. Oh, 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody.